from went to Butte College, which is awesome, cause just because Myron's there, so it makes me feel happy. And um, and so and then they uh, the money's going to West some of it to West Ed and and Ed Results to develop the lunch board, which is a statewide accountability system. And what I want to talk about today is how it relates to what we do in ICT digital media and what what we're looking at and how um, we can make ourselves look good, which is, as a faculty, that's kind of my goal, right? And that's what I told everyone I work with, is to understand it and learn how to use it to your own benefit, instead of the opposite is have it and be afraid of it and not use it and then just pretend it's not there, which will negatively impact you in the future. Not a good idea. So what else? So at Golden West, I teach classes in digital media, and my chair is back there, Warren. And Sean's back there, so I met, and, um, and I met Myron and another ethic. And then what I do for less than full time is I'm a research associate. And then I'll talk about today, don't let me forget, um, the Workforce Credentials Coalition is the national committee that I co-founded with um, the state of North Carolina. And we're working directly with the Department of Ed to track uh, third party industry certifications in terms of getting jobs. And so it's a it's a national effort. So that's kind of the thing most relevant to what this conference is all about that I'll talk about. But I just got back from there. So there's some interesting stuff going on. CCC, I know CCC Confer was going to give me issues. All right. So I'll go over this kind of quickly. Uh, Launch Board is actually starts um, through the K-12 system. And there are MOUs in the state. Now I think there's very few um, missing segments that CalPASS Plus has the data from all of the K-12 system. So when it comes through the CDE and just a file that they, the same file that they have to upload already, just gets uploaded to CalPASS. So they don't enter anything new in there. Um, one thing to say about that is, is ICT people, we're trying to get um, through these different grants that we have, for example, Pathway grants and the 1070 grants, those grants, we're trying to get as much information um, for them to upload as possible in that one uh, operation. So for example, if they're looking at job shadowing in high school, internships in high school, um, getting A plus certification in high school, we'd like a data field in there, in their CalPADS data it's called, to upload at the same time because that will help us track uh, those students in the ICT field. So they're working on that through the CCPT grants and that's one of the things that the new Pathways TAP director and myself being the data director will help kind of streamline so that it's kind of one effort instead of kind of uploading extra data sheets. If that makes sense, it's really important to know. Um, we know the students, when they do this stuff early on, middle school, elementary school, I think we heard that this morning in the keynote, um, through high school, that they're more successful transitioning in through a STEM field in the community college. And so uh, we want to track that. And what that tells us is when they get in, what classes they're taking, are they going all the way to the capstone, are they getting articulated credit or dual enrollment credit, for example, and are they coming over and being successful? Those are the kind of things we're looking at. So the launch board gives data on um, in a very easy format, and we are going to change the GUI in February. Okay, so uh, that's not public information, but it doesn't really matter. You could tell people and they won't believe you. So <laughs> it, it's going to be um, a little bit easier to look at, and but the data is going to be the same. Um, we're going to, we're moving to a much bigger database because. Turns out this thing's uh, monster is getting data from disparate sources and all putting in there. And so the way it was developed wasn't developed that way, and so we're going to a much bigger system. So here's some of the important things included, which really is exciting to have something from your college and your program being related to jobs. And I'll actually go into the launch board directly and show you what that looks like and what it's, what it's going to look like in the future. So here's some of the K-12 metrics that uh, we start with. Did you take one course or two courses in high school? And that uh, definitely relies on the coding. So I know that we all need t-shirts, coding. We've been in them this morning. That's really important. So did they code those classes as CTE or as like a workforce education course? If they're not coded, we're not going to be able to pick them up in the data. So um, that's some of the training and that kind of the pathways grant that's, that's going on so we can get those courses. The articulated courses, the problem we've had is they've been, we've been tracking contracts, like how many contracts you have per school. Now we're tracking how many students got articulated credit. So that's a different, completely different metric. And so uh, there's some ideas. Uh, there's a company called Katema. 
that uh, we can use to track data over, but we haven't systematized that statewide yet. So far, to be honest, dual enrollment is the best way to get articulated credit or transcripted credit right now until uh, we until districts kind of break some of those rules, like the residence. You got, have you heard of the residency requirements and things? Some districts say you have to be in the school for so many units until you can gain articulated credit. So some of those roadblocks for students are um, they basically shut down the articulation system and they never get articulated credit. So the statewide pathways grant, one of the things is that is a policy grant, so policy driven. In order to break down some of those silos and barriers and make a kind of systemic way to do articulation statewide where students get transcripted credit, um, that'll take like statewide policy push to happen. It's not like right now it's district by district. So then the question is, you know, can you get through the political because students, are, we never designed the schools to do that statewide. So those are the types of data issues that we have in there. But so we have articulated dual enrollment um, transitions in the same or similar pathway in high school. Like, did the early intervention in high school, like for example in computer science, did you stay in there? So that's what we want to know. And then we want to know if there's other barriers, for example, ESL courses or a number of classes below transfer level. And our CCE students are definitely in that bucket. Um, and we can tell on the launch board, we can disaggregate by age and gender and ethnicity. So also by financial aid and special services. So we can look at those populations and see how they're affected. Any questions so far? Yes. Um, I know that uh, we're supposed to be getting information on launch board to, as to how many of our students are getting hired as jobs. Is that uh, active yet or is that still in the It's active. Exactly. I'll show you on the actual launch board too. I flip through this kind of fast. Okay, good question now. So, and it's tied to UI data, but I'll show you how it works. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to pass this up. I talked about the, the grant. Um, so, CalPass Plus. One of the things that we're fighting a little battle, but we're pretty much over it now. Is there was CalPass, and you had to input all the data in there. And now you don't have to do that anymore. So, there was some um, reluctance to sign up as, with the MOU into the system, but it's changed a lot. So now they can see like where their students are going, which is a big help for them on their preparation list. That's just how to join CalPass Plus. Anyone with the EDU address can join it. And you just go in there, and then you can get access to the launch board. But you have to request it. <coughs> this is just data stuff from uh, the K-12 side, like stuff they have to put in CalPads so that we can track their students. Skip that. Um, some of these are some of the transition reports that we're going to get that are really important for um, for our partners. So um, coming in, and this is going to help us too, like where we're going to start our CTE students, especially the STEM students who really need math competencies and science competencies, English competencies. So remediation reports, student success, um, those types of things. This is just what um, CalPath Plus, besides the launch board, has different other charts like students um, coming in through, you know, whichever system, community college or university. So that's what that kind of looks like. And then um, students that go through any remediation or transition or didn't transition to higher education. And how they're progressing through the pipeline. So all of this information is what kind of you get if you're, if you're a partner. So also included in there is if you get a community college certificate, and we'll have um, another column that's an industry certificate here as well. So this is where we're gonna, I'm going to move to the live launch board in a second, but there's four sections in it that we'll look at. And you get program level information. And then you, drill, you can drill down to different things about students. So we're going to look at the common metrics. There's um, 33 metrics basically looking at a student's education life that we've defined. I, I, and those, um, there's kind of set in stone now, but I think they'll probably change over time, depending on what we find. Yes? So that's a, that's a big one, right? It's program or pathway. So because, like, let's take a hard one, um, biotech. So is that, like, biotech for pharmaceuticals or biotech for manufacturing or lab tech? And so. Um, right now, that's what the pathway grants are trying to do. We have definitions of them at the community college by top code. Depends what top code they lie under. We're tracking by a six-digit top code. 
So it's how the college define them. So we know that. But what we don't know is in K-12 how they define those. And they're br more broadly defined. And then we have a crosswalk that I can show you where it is that shows you all the different programs where, like biotech, for example, can transfer into community college. So we track a program based on information that we're getting from our, our basically CCPT grants, grantee partners and where they're aiming for their students to go. So it's, it's, which means it's not perfect. We don't have like, this is biotech here and this is biotech. Like, here's medical, in, introduction to medical anything, and then it can go into all these other fields. So it's, it's a difficult process. That's why all that grant is going on, because we didn't design it that way, right? We just did these programs independently, and now they relate to one another, but they're not a direct transfer program, in other words. So that's, that's a really tough nut to So when we saw these momentum points, we're like, so how are we going to pull data for program or pathway that's undefined between systems. So you're stuck in the mud and data between each time you transition from one institution to another. So, um, which is the, what the crosswalk is, which will, I imagine, get improved over time if people see data that doesn't look right. So, um, this is the main thing you probably need to know. How many people do events like have students do like a pathway day or go visit a company or go to an industry thing or something you guys do? So, People, Sean does that every day. So it should work. So uh, that's something that at my school we do really well because we have people who know how to do that. And there's an easy system to track the people who participate in it. And then a say it, you get to tell it when you set this up what momentum point it relates to. So it might be like a workforce day or pathway day. You say momentum point 19 or whatever it is. All your students go in there and pop the launch board. And you can track them for <coughs> as long as you want. And so that is the stuff where you can show off what you do well. So if you do pathway dates with groups, you can say, hey, I'm doing pathway dates with these high schools and these colleges or contract debt or whatever, um, anything related to workforce or jobs. And then you, you'll have some numbers in there, which um, the idea is to lead to continual funding of that exercise if it's helping students get jobs. Because now we're hooking those students to jobs. So if you don't put them in there, you know, you're not going to show anything that you're doing. And so if this is the way that you're accountable in a way, it's, for me it's a way to show off what we do. That process has been invisible to everybody. We've just been doing it. And it's like, yeah, yes, but we don't have any way to show that work. So I think it's great for some of these types of activities. So there's two ways to do it. Um, I, I, if I have time, I'll go through it. But there's two ways to do it. One is you set up an event and said where it's going to be, what high schools or colleges are involved in it, and then like what it is. And you can tie it to a grant number, for example, if you want to. Different things you want to look at later. And then you could either generate an email link, which you can email to like a high school teacher or a company if it's contract ed, and they can have people fill it out. Or you can upload a spreadsheet with all the same information. And there's like a sample spreadsheet. It's like first name, last name, birthday, just your general registration stuff. So um, it's a, it's a, the first time we're going to be able to track those things. That, and, and they're student outcomes, so they're not um, teacher trainings, for example. So the launch board is only tracking student outcomes. And that's been a big source of confusion because we're so used to not doing that. We're so used to tracking how many meetings we had and contracts and teaching training and things like that. So we have this crosswalk, which is on the Doing What Matters site. I think it was mentioned this morning, um, doingwhatmatters.cccco.edu. And that, you can look at it. Um, there's a launch board tab, and it goes through this crosswalk. So if you were, you can look at your sector, which we would be ICT, digital media, and then see uh, in high school what sectors are like that, and then where we're tracking that by program. And so you can go through and see how that tracks in the community college, how it tracks the universities, and how it tracks on the NAICS codes and the job codes. So there's a big crosswalk there. So that's how we're doing the data. So um, basically, if you go on there, you can check the crosswalk. And then if you see something wrong, just let us know directly. And then we can um, address that. And so we, we do have the launch board out as like a beta test, because we do want people to go on there and say, hey, like the healthcare industry, they're like, none of our stuff is in there. And that's because we were tracking by four digit top codes until we moved the database. And it turns out all their stuff is really under six digit top code. So having the beta, but it had a chance for them to give us some really important feedback. 
so where they, they couldn't even use it. It was completely useless until we do that. I mentioned this Katema data. There's like 12 pronunciations of it, just like my name. So <laughs> Katema, I don't know what the real one is, but um, if you do a lot of articulation, this is some software to look into to get a secure database between systems that we can pull from. We're building a dashboard for these pathways as well, so you'll be able to click on a college or a high school um, program and then see the pathway going over. And there's certain, there's like 19 things you have to report on that grant, and so those will all be reported in this tool. So job shadowing is one of them, like things that aren't reported right now in that for the high schools. And I'm going to skip this all right now and go to the launch board stuff, but you can read it on my Google. Okay, so the launch board, so there's four sections, the snapshot, the metrics, tracking, and help desk, and I, I want to go over um, industry certifications here, what's going on with this. So first of all, if this is new to you, the, the nice thing is it's just arrows that you click. So for the first time in my life, I can go, okay, I'm going I'm to look at my college. I can look at a whole region, so I can look at digital media in the whole state or in just a region, or I can just look at a college. I'll pick on your college, but Butte, because it's in earlier. This is live. Yeah. I can look at the whole sector in the state, or let's see, sector, or I can look at it by top code. So I can go statewide or just, um, I can look at top code, like IT. And I can look at a year and then hit refresh. So this is right now pulling data from the database, and so we can look at, this is my favorite part, so just even students. I know when I've written program reviews or like Perkins grants and things, you know, it's always like who are the populations that need our help, or for example, on mine, a lot of times it's women, we don't have enough women in my classes or something, or our program, so we'll look at these and see, um, I should go here back, it looks like that's not all reported. So I can look by college, by program, and by year, there we go, that's recorded. And I can go, okay, well, I got this, the, you know, gender, ethnicity, age, and then you can see, like they're talking about this morning, is everybody older or are you like getting everybody in their thing? Because they're talking about how it's important to get the transfer students and the AA students. So that's in there, financial aid, um, EOPS. So all of that is in there. So it's, and it's really easy to, to look at. And, we, and then the stars are if there's less than 10 students reported in a certain field for FERPA reasons for data security. Uh, that was just enrollments. Um, so that's like just coming straight from the chancellor's office data March same matching numbers. But you can see it now right for your program. Or like I said, regionally, which is really helpful for the deputy sector navigators to think, okay, what's going on in San Francisco Bay Area, for example. Or maybe compare it with um, Los Angeles or something, you know, whatever. Whatever, you're, depend on what project you're trying to do. Um, or just statewide, like the Steve Wright would be doing. What's going on statewide with, with these students? So it's a super easy way to do that without having to get into the data mark. And data mark is the place to do research that right? I do all my research in there. But this is like, I can look at it. Um, I can look at this from a faculty or chair standpoint or whatever. Um, so full-time equivalent students, we have credit and non-credit. But what I love here, I'll flip through some of these, is um, this is new. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point. So depending on your role, if you're a deputy sector navigator, you can see all the colleges in your area or a regional chair. But if you're if you're at have an EDU address and you're at one college, you're gonna see your college. So but let's say you had other colleges that wanted to share data. If your colleges wanted to do MOU and share with each other, you'd see more than that. But mostly people are getting together at kind of the regional consortium meetings and looking at things. You can download things and, and print spreadsheets and things. So um, it, you know, it's kind of restricted to that so far, but so that they can't rank colleges easily, like kind of general public stuff. So that's true. So, so like I'm seeing all of them, but you may not see all of them. <clears throat> this is a new one, uh, program persistence. So. This has to do with the pathways. You took intro level course and then you stayed in there for a year um, or switched to another CTE pre program or non CTE program. So that's a new some new metrics that came out. Milestones is is um, 
this is what kind of what why we get rated badly because how many people finished an AA or transferred where we're a CTE kind of most of us are doing terminal degrees and so except in computer science where that's more of a transfer degree so um, what we wanted to do here is show success and so we can show that students are in there they took eight units in something and we can show this credentials. So we have locally issued certificates. We've never reported these. So one of the people ask me, what should I be doing this year? I might figure out how to get your school to report the locally issued certificates. Anything under 12 units or some schools under 18 units. So if you can get your admissions and records people to take the stack of paper and put it in here, put it in something, then you can report those. So why it's important is because we we have hard research that's still continuing. Um, that if you ever saw Dr. Peter Barr talk or Kathy Booth, my colleague at West Ed, uh, there, if you take a few classes, um, there's a good chance that you got a wage gain or a different job. And so we can show a success in that way. And like I said, this is, the idea is to show success for our students. So not all students come to complete a certificate, although we like them to, but like mine, mine do more now, but a lot of them come back just to learn, like some teaching audio stuff, they'll learn a few studio classes and then they'll go work. And so I don't really want to show them that they I want to show that they're working, right? So if they went out and, and worked and got a middle, at least a middle class income job, that's what we're going to show here. And so those low, in, low unit certificates or over eight units is where those students are going to pop up. So the whole population that's showing is non-completers. Now the, the national government is going to track that as well. So what the Department of Ed is looking at is the same stuff we're doing. We're kind of a leader in this area and thinking about this stuff and other states are like, yeah, that's exactly what we want to report. First, especially in what's coming down the pipeline. It's like that college ranking thing, right? Some national voodoo ranking thing. So we have to devise ways to show that we're going to rank up there in some categories. So if we only show certificate completions, we're probably going to have an epic fail for some of our programs. So we want to show something else and so do other colleges. And it's not a failure if our students are getting jobs. That's why we're there for. So that's not incompatible with any certificate. We, we like in my school, we take, that Sean made these sheets, we take, go to every student and make them like, did I take this, this, and this, you know, walk them to the counselor, you know, do all, everything we can do to get them to finish. But some students, and sometimes it depends on their age as well, if they had some school before, um, will not finish one of those. Like, I didn't finish one, for example. Isn't there an effort to uh, be able to track any certification as part of it? Yes. Okay. So that's the big thing. This is done. So the big thing is um, nationally. That's the like the question of the day. Um, basically, industry has a very high value on industry certification. For example, CompTIA, Cisco, everything we've been talking about. But what happens now? So you get certified in something, Adobe, Apple, whatever it is, and then you like when you get a you go to get a job like. You like get something about that, like a certificate or something, put on your resume. Maybe walk around with a copy of your certificate, and you show them. So it's only the only exposure that is between you and your major potential employer, current employer. There's no way to market that really, which graduates will help with. But and there's no way for us to see how that helps a student, or even if we offer the right classes towards that. We might know as teachers like. Do we, we think our students kind of pass if they let us know, but if they took them off campus, like we might not even know for sure. So this is going on everywhere, and since there's a difference in or a perceived importance in you know these entry certifications, what we're doing is meeting directly with the Department of Ed and then a lot of states, and we're doing a CompTIA study first, where we're going to see if we can collect the right information to track students where they went to school, what they took, and then how that relates to completions, um, populations, all the disaggregated data I showed, and then jobs um, based on each state's unemployment insurance information. So we're getting the data from CompTIA. The reason why the national government is involved is there's been a, um, a, a struggle to get the registration information over to, to national data. So it sounds really simple, but for some reason, like other states, you take first initial, last name, and email, and make a match. Like in California, we have a lot of students um, from the same, like uh, ethnicities, like Hispanic students, or my area Vietnamese students, and they, a lot of them have the same last name, 
or like Illinois, they seem to be, have no problem with this matching stuff. So in California, it's a big problem, which is why we have to be a leader and very vocal in how we want to collect data. So the, this is the hard part, is what does the industry get from it? Because this is a money income. We know it costs 150 bucks a pop to take a test, so we don't want to they don't want to turn that off because we're doing some weird stuff with data. So what we're trying to provide back is what how um, students are getting more jobs so we can offer more certificates and they'll actually make more money. So that's the data they want back. They, they want to look at it. If it looks good then I think that'll proliferate and get more data from these companies. So it's a tough um, thing. And they, the other thing is their data is mixed up between the national data and the international data. So the EU has all these other requirements. Um, like you're not allowed to show a birth date, like the whole birth date and stuff like that. So there's some legal problems in, in that end of things that I didn't know about until like a couple weeks ago with the EU stuff. So CompTIA mixes it all up and it's all under one giant uh, terrible contract that we kind of work on that right now. So um, that effort is important. And so what we should be doing is like what Sean is doing. I think you did, did you do your job? Yeah, come up and do it. Or so, real quickly, uh, tomorrow, uh, Jen and Angela and Mary talking about the Adobe certification and the rollout that we did. Um, with, uh, we're actually offering it for free for all of us. We went out and bought a site license. So, we're going to get into that tomorrow and how we did that. But what we started doing was, I think I need to log in. I think I can see yours. I can. Now, do the, go back to the first one and do registration. Then. <laughs> <laughs> so actually what you're looking at right now is everyone in the state who's actually put in an event. So you go in, that was, the, I'll go back to launch for so Let me just go back to it. So what Sean's doing, because we don't automatically check the stuff yet, is he's just doing it in the tracking tool. So all of the testing that we've done at Golden West, we've done two, we did two sessions in December with our students. So we invited, it was kind of a hand pick because we were trying to get the, the thing running. So we kind of hand picked our students that we knew would at least succeed with the Adobe certification. And it's not easy. We'll talk about that tomorrow. It, it's, a, it's an interesting uh, process. So we went out, bought the license. We have a $5,000 license with unlimited testing within our labs and unlimited practice testing. So what we do is we offer any student who wants to take the exam who's enrolled, they can take the exam with us. And so we set up days they can come in. So we can do 30 at a time. But what we want to do, and a big part of why we did this was because of LaunchBoard. We knew what was going to be coming down with tracking with certifications or anything else. So we got our certification licensing done early, and we started tracking it from day one. And so we come in, do additional tracking, and we create an event. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to show a finished one. So we can either create or, in our case, manage. And what's nice about this is we, with your account, you see other people's information, but you can't pull any of their data. So you can see their events, but you can't go in and see who went to that event. Mine, you can. Yeah, because you're, <laughs> yeah, you're, the, you're the top. So actually, right here, all three of these are ones that we did. Um, one of the things that I do is we go out, and actually we, all of us do in the department, I took one of our high school groups out to Concordia University where I also teach and we did a full day, like a pathway day at the four-year school because we were the sponsor for it and the high school. We can tag the high school, which was Santa Ana Valley High, as well as our school. Both of us get credit in this system. So events that we're doing with the high school, all the data is being pulled together. Let me see if we can pull it up. No, this is just part of our outreach program, but what we're doing is making sure that all this data and all the things we're doing are going into this system to show, and I probably shouldn't pull that up, but you can actually see our high school students. This is their data. And what we did was the high school, there are some MOUs, there are MOUs on, but they're not giving us the data just yet, and that's your guys' problem yeah. to deal with. But in the, in the short term, what we're doing is I work with my high school students, or my high school instructors, we create the event, Actually, let me pull up the event. Edit. So here's the event. So it's a K through 12 activity. I can pull up all the high schools in California in here, as well as all the community colleges. So I'll pull up Valley High. So now they're tagged onto my event. Name of the event, start time, end time, grant numbers. So if you have a grant number that this is part of, put your grant number in there so it cross references. How long it is, contact info, location, sector. 
So this is where we start getting into tagging things correctly. In our case, ICT Digital Media. Then colleges. So we can have multiple colleges. So let's say us and our sister school at Orange Coast did this something together. We could both get credit for this. The same thing with high schools. If we had multiple high schools, we're pulling these up. So let me, oh, I don't want to throw a CC in here, but I want to give them credit for that. No, I don't want to. <laughs> but you can see you can pull these up. <laughs> then here's where the momentum points start coming in. This is where we need to talk. Yeah. It's not allowing me to do my certificate ones. So in this case, these are the momentum points. That's a whole other monster. But there's how many? 33. So there's 33 momentum points. So in our case, this one was complete a student orientation assessment program while attend while middle school or high school, and that's it was about the closest match I could get on this. So we try to match these up, and you could do multiple ones. Uh, they are completing a CT articulated course at that high school with us. So that's another one. So all that articulation agreements and everything, it shows that the student completed and it was with us at some point. I uh, do some custom fields, but when you're all done here, and I'm kind of going through this quickly, uh, where'd the link go? Uh, usually there's a link down here. Okay, let me pull up the other one. Oh, view. Here we go. There it is. So what I do is I send this link to my high school instructor and they make it an assignment. So if they want to go on the field trip, they got to fill this thing out. I, I can't take them either way anyway. I need to know who they are if we get a list together. So the high school students are filling these out. Really all we care about is first name, last name, and birth date. Yeah. If we get those three things, we can start tracking the person. And if they give us more info, great, whatever. But email is a big one too because we do communicate with them. And so what, the way I got around it and to get the best data, my instructors at the high school make it an assignment. So they actually give credit. They go, you're going to get 20 points and go on the field trip if you want to fill it out. And I think I've got, what, about 15 in here now? Yeah. So like we did a Sony field trip, same thing with all the others. <coughs> but getting back to the Adobe stuff, what we do is every time we hold one of our uh, certifications, like we just did, uh, I think this is uh, the 29th. There we go. So this is everyone who signed up for the exam. Then I don't put the data in until they actually show up, take the exam, and before I give them anything, I have that link that I showed you a second ago with the name and email. They fill it out, we let them go. So we're capturing all that data before they walk out of the room. And so now we've associated with it. So now in the system, we're showing that they took one of the Adobe the ACA exams. It's not specific yet. That's another thing we're going to talk about if we actually put the tests in there right. to show which tests. But we're showing that they came, <laughs> took the exam, and at least passed one of those exams. And so until they get all of the kinks worked out with all the national data, we're actually capturing all this data into the launch system. add that functionality that metric so the momentum point shows up. So yeah, we'll so about that. yeah, we got some little things on that. But we've been doing this with all of our stuff. Anytime we do a pathway day, uh, Warren, who's our chair, he's, we're setting up a whole set of pathway days where the high school students come and spend the day on campus. We got to get all that data in. So anytime, and we're doing that across the department is if we get everyone on board, all the instructors, if they go out and do something on their own, like they go out and visit a high school and do some, we want to get that data in there. And I know it takes a little bit of time, but the nice thing is you now at least have a tool that you can get people to sign up. So if you're doing, um, what's the, help me here, Flames and Days. No, 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 when businesses come in and take classes. Oh, contract Yeah, contract ed. It's actually set up so the contract that people sign up through this. That's what it was upfront. designed for. So now we're just, and I said, why can't we use it for other stuff? So we're kind of in the rave in there. And so we get the birthday and that name. Those are the two okay. big things for us. And then it's eventually we'll be able to see if someone, we can correlate the data that they took the ACA exam, they got a certificate from Golden okay. West. Or maybe, and I think with the high school stuff, we go out and because we have nine high schools all within like 30 minutes of or nine community colleges like 30 minutes from each other. A student I may help at Valley High ends up going to Santa Ana in the end, but we still show that we were involved in it under a grant or any of our outreach, and it continues on from there. And so we get credit. What it really comes down to is our campus. We get credit for helping that person succeed somewhere else. So we're one big region now. That makes sense. So any questions? That's really important. That's kind of why I came today is so people don't even know what this is. And then we got other schools putting in data. So, you know, like if you're doing this stuff, it's probably going to do to get started. 
Yeah. Um, now, if they're not doing it, they're getting what kind of thing because they're not being evaluated. Well, I say, like, else. I'd say, you know, like this, you know how first year planning year for things, but, you know, you should be learning how to do it, getting systems together to report things that are not reported, get all that going so that, you know, next year, when they start tying this to, like, grant, you know how grants just automatically get tied to things? Well, everything I've seen and, and they tell our team is tied to this, all the grants, every single one of them. And so, you know, if your stuff isn't in there, then it's probably going to be hard to justify it. But you could go in the data mart and find some of it. Some of it's just easier, which is what I was going to, the question you asked me before, like employment, you can go in. Uh, someone had a question. I'll just have some curious. <laughs> No, not yet, because Perkins, um, they get a file from the chancellor's office from my colleague JC, who you might be working with, and Bamada. And, and so I'm not going to, they're going to use, well, I've, I've spoken a lot at a lot of Perkins conferences, K-12 and community college, and so uh, people are interested in using it to get information on um, under a kind of um, populate, special populations. Um, but they're still going to use the files that they get from the chance stop that JC provides as well. So will it get folded in? Probably in the future, but right now it's still separate information. But it will be used for other grants? Yes. Regional grants for sure. Um, 1070 for sure. The Pathways Trust for sure. Uh, we're doing program review tool with the Academic Senate with Wheeler and um, the, I can't remember her name, the President, Julie. And that kind of tenant. So we're, it's really being integrated everywhere. How do you track the students after they leave to know whether they got a job and what job they got and whether they got a raise? Well, this is the cool thing about California is in PCC Apply, if you opt in, or I don't know if it's opt in or don't opt out, but we do put your social in there. Which uh, unemployment, what we're using is these different, there's four different databases. One is the Employment Outcome Survey. So if you're, if you deployed a survey, you actually get information from your students where they went and got a job and how much they made after two and five years and be before they graduated and after. So that's the most kind of accurate information. So all the, through the IRS, you say? Yeah, it's through the unemployment insurance database. The U, and that's what the whole country does it that way. Even if they don't file for unemployment or Right, right. That's how it works. And so EDD is um, you have statewide information, so you can get like, like this is for digital media in, at Butte College and, and people that um, it, it have different information. So this, and you can look at the methodology. So employment retention, did they get a job? Did they get it in their field? Um, did, if they're in the survey, then what do those students look like? Then you get the salary surfer information, which um, is way ahead of what all the other states are doing. They, everybody loves this stuff. So and if you did, um, the top code, which is 614, which is the one that I'm under, like what the salaries look like in your area. And so like, for example, maybe in the far north would be different than like LA, right? So you can see the different uh, wages there. Um, and like when I look at this for like business or nursing, you get like rows and rows and rows of jobs. Then the EMSI data, um, so you can look at, now you can get some more specific information for jobs. And then you can look at, now if I look at computer science, it looks totally different. Um, and then you, so you get regional, statewide, and then with the employment outcome survey, like college specific data. So what, the reason why we have all those is there's not one super accurate thing. So you can look at a cohort and then look at these different things and then tell your story. For example, um, we had one situation where people, there was a lot of job openings, but people weren't getting jobs. And we looked at this and said, oh, they're not getting jobs. And that's a study that rocked it up in, here in the Bay Area, and then they, then they deployed a survey, and then everyone said needed more math and English skills. So they did that for a few years, came back, did this again, and then found all those people were getting jobs. So it's, it's cut, or like maybe another one would be um, in like post where you're doing certain um, maybe crime investigation classes, but you're not completing um, like an 18 unit credential because you don't need it, and then they're all getting jobs. You can go in here and then show you know why that situation is what it is why it's either successful or not successful. So those stories that take disparate databases, this is what this is, and if, if you're a good audience to talk to, to non-ICT people don't know what I'm talking about, but taking all this disparate databases from all over the place, putting together to tell a story. So what it is, it's not going to tell you the story. You have to go look at it 
and then based on what you do at your college, use that to support your argument. It's, that's why it's called the launch board, is to launch your data conversations and support it. Now, if you went out and found all this data independently and then tried to make that argument, someone's going to tell you, and I've heard this, you have crappy data, that quote unquote. And every time I go to a program approval or something, that's what I hear. Now I can go, we have the same data. So that, and that so it gives you a level playing field in program review, program approval, those types of things, and so, which is really important. So, but you know, there's a, data things are always a misconception, so it's not a way to, to rank you and say you're better or worse than something, it's a way to support, what we're trying to do is support what we do and fund students to get jobs. So if we're doing something wrong, we need to know about it as well. You know, we're spending all our money training faculty, but they're not helping students do anything. So those are things that you would need to know. And then things that you do well, you got a ton of kids taking three classes and getting a job, or everybody's finishing a job, they're finishing and not getting job-wise. So these are things that hopefully now it's an easier look. Yeah. Right, and we, and it's, you know, we're not in the business of job placement, so to say, especially compared to like private universities, but we're at least in the business and, and especially in career tech and training people towards jobs or industry certification, so we want to make sure we're doing our job right. And there's, it's important because uh, one of the things I learned when I was back east is that um, uh, Biden said it directly, I, I was lucky enough to go to the tech grant presentation, he said, you know, we're relying solely, almost solely on the community colleges. That's why we're getting these half a billion dollar tech grants, because it's the only system that's flexible enough to react to something. For example, cybersecurity was what they were talking about there. Like, you can make a one-year program for all these displaced workers, and we can get all these people back in the fifty to $70,000 jobs in a year. They're the only system that can do it. And they're basically putting all their eggs in one desk and say, you guys got to do this. We'll give you as much money as you need, but it's you guys. And so, um, you know, that's what, there isn't like another solution, in, especially in the current government, for sure. <clears throat> but you know, like what I thought about geese is that money is going to fund those students. They're unemployed adults with kids. They're in there, yeah. Um, Firing or encouraging a variety of these types of activities that would be tracked and then you know, um, funded because you don't have something to track and compare. Whereas in the past, if you try a new activity, there's no way to track it. You know, so why bother? I don't know if this is. Well, I think it's changed immediately. I think Sean, I'm going to put you on the spot second. Like how this changes what you do at your college, like how you think about things you do for students, and I. Your whole thing's changed in two years, so he's like a prime example of how this has changed his thinking. I've known about it. Yeah, and that, that was part of the reason. It just seems the way that we approach. I'm not going to say like how we collect the data, but how we're going to look. It's important. Yeah. 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 Ye
I just wanted to say that you know, this is a big undertaking, but it's really, really, really important for the ITC to get to the media sector. Because the Student Success Task Force came out and basically defined success as academic transfer, degree, or certificate. That's not even a goal. It's so a lot of students in these programs. Um, about one in a thousand enrollments turns into into a certificate, academic certificate, and in California, about one in 2,000 enrollments turns into a degree. We have a program here at City College of San Francisco. Half the students already have a bachelor's degree. Right. They're, they're, they're not interested in academic transfer. They're not interested in an associate degree. They're not interested in an academic certificate. They're interested in skills which allow them to get work. And there's increasing acknowledgement of that with this term skills builders. But we need data to make the case that there's value from you know, acquiring those skills at the community college. And the best way to get that is to raise the differences. Our, our best one of the tools. Right, and tracking skills. people that took one or two classes or whatever that was, it was short of the certificate. And if we can build into this mm -hmm. a data integration with um, industry certification completion, that's really important. Because we know, you know from a bunch of different sources that employers value those certifications because they're, they're understood by them. Um, so it's a big undertaking, but it's really important for our community. Good thing I got in because I'm going to be. Yeah, I'm going to be talking about the other aspect of all this. <laughs> into the third party evaluations that our students go to looking for what college they want to attend. You know, so we have to make sure that what they're seeing is actually accurate and that we're using this data to actually improve. We don't do that sooner or later. This is going to bite us and we're not going to have students. So yeah, it's a wonderful tool. We need to use it. We also make sure it's being used right so that, you know, we do uh, continue to grow and continue to attract the students that we want in our area. Otherwise, they're going to Dubai, they're going right. to Texas, they're going to you know, New York. They're not coming back to us. Um, especially for students who are looking for skills improvement. They want, you know, the employer's going to find their way to this data. <coughs> and they're going to be evaluating, okay, this person went to this college. Do we like that college in terms of the skills they're getting in the way they're being evaluated? So yes, it's not intended for that purpose, but eventually the third parties are going to get a hold of this information one way or another, and it's going to be used to evaluate how the college is stacked up. I mean, it's just reality, folks. I have no comments on that. But thanks for having me, and I thank you for coming at the late hour. And um, you know. <laughs>